video is an educational tool about breast cancer screening. Breast cancer accounts for 23% of total cancer cases every year and 14% of all cancer deaths and remains the leading cause of cancer death among women. This video is intended mainly for first year residents. You may have experienced clinical breast exam or been exposed to it in medical school. My name is Dr. Amanda Backland. I'm a third year resident at Texas Tech in the Family Medicine Department and in this video I intend to approach the clinical breast exam and show you proper technique and patient positioning. So briefly let's just go over basic screening guidelines for breast cancer. The American Cancer Society recently updated their guidelines in 2011 and they recommend an annual mammogram for every woman age 40 and over and continue annually for as long as they are in good health. Women in their 20s and 30s should have a clinical breast exam uh, as part of their regular health exam every three years. Breast self-examination is also another option for women in their 20s. Women should be told about the benefits and the limitations of breast self-examination and they should report any changes to their health professional right away. The clinical breast exam should start first with the patient in a seated position and unclothed down to the waist. Have the patient relax their arms and place them at their sides. As always, the first step in any physical examination is inspection. You should inspect the breasts for symmetry, nipple inversion, peau de orange, skin changes, or anything else that you can notice, so such as scars or uh, moles, etc. Then have the patient raise their arms above their head, as so, and then have the patient put their arms at their waist and contract their pectoral muscles. The purpose of this is to evaluate for nipple retraction. The next step while the patient is still seated is to do a node examination. You should start with the lymph nodes in the cervical region, the supraclavicular, infraclavicular, and axillary nodes. With a patient who has very large pendulous breasts, you can even do the clinical breast exam in the seated position. However, the best position for a majority of the clinical breast exam is with the patient supine on the table and the ipsilateral arm behind their head as so. Okay, so imagine that this is a patient's right breast and their right arm is behind their head. And So imagine a rectangle that goes from axilla down the mid-axillary line to the bottom of their bra. So you have a rectangle here and you need to cover all of this area. Use the pads of these three fingers, first, second, and third digits, and you're going to move in concentric circles like this. Start in the axilla because you really need to get that tail of spence, which is that breast tissue that goes up into the axilla. And you're going to go down in small circles, feeling all the breasts. I usually use one hand doing light pressure and the, the tailing hand doing a little bit deeper pressure. And you can just do back and forth, and you really want to get all of the tissue. And in a patient with very large breasts, you can even use one hand to kind of scoot the breast aside so you can get the tissue and go back and forth until you get to about mid nipple line and then push it back the other way. Last but not least, you really want to feel around the nipple and even do a little bit of squeezing of the nipple to see if you can uh, express any discharge that is abnormal from that nipple. So here's another model and I'm just again going to show you the vertical strip motion that I usually use with the, my two hands and we're going to do concentric circles and we're feeling for breast nodes and you don't have to do this vertical strip if you were taught to do concentric circles. You can use your hands and go in circles all the way around the breast. Or you can do what they call a radial approach. You start at the nipple and go out like radial spokes. It's just whatever you're comfortable with or whatever you're taught. So now let's briefly go over what you do when you find a mass. As a family medicine physician, if you find a mass that's subtle or... Uh, even if it isn't subtle, that's just not obviously visible or massive, your first job is to send them for an imaging study of some sort. In a patient who is less than 30, your imaging study of choice would be an ultrasound. In a patient that is over 30, in imaging, your imaging would be mammogram plus or minus the ultrasound. Now, if you do have a patient who has an obvious large mass or a mass that is even visible, then you would just send them directly to a surgeon for a biopsy. So our role as family physicians is not only to screen our patients appropriately and do our annual clinical breast exams, but also to educate our patients and go over their risk factors of breast cancer with them and their family members.